Hey there, guys and gals. Dungeons & Dragons has released a bunch of board games in the past, uh, some of which take place on the same grid that you would normally play the game, uh, like The Legend of Dritz, for example. If you don't know who Dritz Dorden is, he's probably the most recognizable figure in Dungeons & Dragons lore. Uh, he's this guy. He's a drow, but he's not evil. Uh, and his partner is Gwenvar, a panther. If you don't have a lot of minis and you want to play physically, some of the Dungeons & Dragons board games come with minis. Now, specifically Legend of Dritz I grabbed because it does have minis that I want to use, but I've seen before other people have put up videos, they've shown what minis are in it, but I've never seen anyone put up the full tiles that you get. The game boards that you make actually form a dungeon, and it is to one-inch grid scale which means that you could potentially reuse these if you're actually playing D&D, if you want to keep it on a regular 1-inch scale. Yes, some people use 1.5-inch scale or 1.5-inch hex, but 1-inch scale is the default for everything. So I wanted to make a video to show you guys what terrain you're getting in here, because there are plenty of videos on what minis you get in it. If you guys want me to make a video showcasing all the minis you get in the Legend of Dritz board game, I'll do that too. Just leave a comment below. I'll show you which ones there are. It was a little difficult for me to see a full like list of what's included. Uh, Board Game Geek is probably where I found the most detailed information. And you do technically make a dungeon in here. Legend of Drixt, for the most part, takes place in the Underdark, which is like underground cabins where the drow and the Durgar live. What you're getting here in this terrain is caves. You're, you're pretty much getting caves. So if you intend to do some caves and you want a couple minis that you can reuse, like there's drow minis, there's a couple demons as well. But again, this is not a video about the, the minis. This is about this is a video about the terrain that you're getting. So we're gonna I'm just gonna go through what the terrain is that you get in here. Now, granted, you probably can't use every single piece of terrain in here in your regular DD game, or you'd have to repurpose them for some other purpose. Um, but you do get some blocks that you can snap together to make a dungeon. If you want to get into Dungeons & Dragons, but you've never played before, the board games are an okay start. They kind of give you the gist of the rules, but everything is wildly simplified. It's not quite Dungeons & Dragons game play, but it is close enough that it could be like your gateway drug to the rest of Dungeons & Dragons. Without further ado, I'm going to start showing you guys what you actually get in here. So maybe you could think of, if I get this board game, I maybe don't have to play the actual board game, but I can use the terrain that's in there to form my own dungeons. The way that the, the terrain works in Legend of Dritz is that, as you can see, all the pieces are like puzzle pieces, so they'll snap together. That's good, especially if you're starting and you have like a table to work with that you're a little worried about the players moving things around on. Uh, the puzzle pieces will help stick all your stuff together, which is nice. Very, very helpful. So you have these two. I'm just going to lift them up one by one, show you closer on the camera. Let me go through here. Now, these guys are pretty much to one inch scale. They're tokens for gameplay. But if you wanted to, you could be like, oh, here's a dwarf, here's a dwarf, here's a dwarf, and you can put them on there if you don't have minis to work with. Um, these guys are a little bit bigger. I guess you could hand them out if you're doing some time sensitive event. The Debuffs and buffs portion that are in Legend of Dritz are not the way that those debuffs and buffs functions in Dungeons and Dragons, so they probably won't be that helpful to you. The healing surge bubbles here are two inch grid, so they're what would cons what would be considered a large creature on a one inch grid. Um, you don't necessarily have to use them as healing surge, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, and the back just shows you this. For a lot of these. You wouldn't put the back out because this isn't what it actually does in game. Uh, time that would help you again. You could use these as dwarf tokens or fighter tokens, barbarian to barbarian, barbarian tokens, anything like that. The back of the actual dungeon though is not really going to help you. Next up, you've got these two areas. You probably won't say to your player something like, "Oh, use the start tile." You could just tell them to ignore that kind of thing. Maybe ignore the arrows and stuff like that. And you could use it as your dwarf, your barbarian, your warrior, whatever. Secret Tunnel is probably not going to use. Crown you could just use as a generic magic item marker. The Campfire token, though, you could definitely use that in a regular game of Dungeons & Dragons. More of these, more poison, which doesn't do what it does. Uh, 
Down here, there's healing surge tokens again, but then there's snort, which is a wild boar. This is probably a giant boar, uh, which he is on the two inch grid. So this is what you would put on your board if you were using a one inch grid to play regular Dungeons and Dragons. He is a large creature. This one actually would work fine for your game. Again, nothing really on the back, just items and stuff. Where are we? Tile Sheet 3 has more squares of area. Again, another poison you don't care about. Has some, like, edges, which is nice. Up at the top as well. I don't know if you'd use those. You could probably use those to signify a ranger or a swashbuckler or something. Uh, she is bigger than the one-inch grid, so if you were using her as a, as a, a regular character, she probably would take up a little bit more space. She would fit in a 1.5-inch grid fine if you're using that as your scale, but these tiles are one inch. You could potentially say that she's a little bit bigger, so you could put her in the center of four tiles and make her a large creature if you wanted to. Tile sheet four has more stuff. Again, you could use these tokens since they're one inch grid on the board as character tokens if you wanted to. Uh, Shimmer Gloom, I think, is supposed to be a large creature here, so the same idea as Yavonel on the last board. Um, you could use these as trap markers if you wanted to. More volcanic vents, a little bit of area. Tile sheet five has more stuff. It's traps, another poison token. Uh, you go over here. Again, Artemis is a little bit bigger than a one inch grid. If it's a 1.5 inch grid, you're fine. You could probably use these to denote like someone has uh, mage armor or something like that over them. Just ignore the HP part. Yeah, and I would say you could probably reuse these two for traps, that kind of thing. More end caps, which is nice. On Tile Sheet 6, we start getting to the rest of the Champions of the Hall, which is Drift's Adventuring Party. So we have Brunor Battlehammer, we have Caddy Bree. These will fit on your board. If you want to add them to your game and you don't have tokens, you don't have minis for them, you could use these tokens fine. And again, you could just say, like, oh, it's not actually Brunor, or it's not Caddy Bree, it's just somebody else. Uh, Methyl Ilvid and Yelp. Sorry, Vidden Velp, my bad, uh, is a Mind Flayer or an Illithid. They're technically medium-sized creatures, so again, this is a bit big, but whatever. Um, immobilize isn't a real Dungeon and Dragons things. There would be Restrained or Paralyzed instead of Immobilized. Got some cool little walkway tiles, which is nice. More end caps. Some statues. They're named here, but like you don't have to pay attention to that if you don't want to. Tile Sheet 7, we finally get a Dritz token. And there's Yarlaxle, who is actually very famous uh, in the Forgotten Realms, so maybe you want to use him. He's kind of a dick, though. Uh, Regis. Now, for these, you could use these as actual traps. You could be like, oh, this is where the giant spider spawns. You got your own traps over here in this dark chasm. The secret caves here. Use these as some traps. You got some crystal shards over here, which is kind of nice. Now, I'm not saying you have to, like, snap the dungeons together exactly where they are. Like, you could leave some space or be like, oh, to your players, like, oh, there's a wall there. That kind of thing. Like, it doesn't have to be exactly what these are, but they will help you build terrain. Especially because I know a lot of people are like me and we have no artistic talent, so this is great. You got a uh, Wolfgar. And a regular size Yarlaxle token, if you want to use in there. You have Urtu, who I believe is the Baylor uh, in this set. Uh, he actually has his own mini. Uh, some more of these, more tiles, more end caps, more HP. Ah. On tile sheet nine, we move up to Artemis. You now has a mini token. Athrogate is one of the dwarves. I think he's a berserker. He's got that. Uh, I have Yachlal, who I believe is a roper, but I could be wrong. Uh, ropers are large, so this is a bit small. But there is a Yachlal mini in the box, if you want to use that instead. Again, Immobilize is not a real D&D buff or debuff, so you don't really have to use that. More end caps. A lot of mushrooms. They love mushrooms in the Underdark. Tile sheet 10. We have filled bowls, which you could probably use as just regular fountains somewhere on the map. They take up one square. That's fine. Uh, this one's a little strange to me. It fits into the board game better than it does the actual Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, so 
this one's four monsters. Normally that would be like a swarm of monsters if they were really tiny and all occupying one space. You can use these, pretend they're pluses, like mage armor or something like that. More end caps. When you get closer to the end, it stops being uh, as helpful terrain-wise because these are tiles for your characters when you're playing them, which is not as helpful. Um, you could say that like these are what it's doing. Uh, you definitely can use treasure chests. Though so these are really big treasure chests, like huge treasure chests. Treasure chests normally fit in one square. Um, some caps you could throw on top, like these are the edges, but this one you could just put on the side, which is nice. You could probably use the lever icon just to say, like, this is the space where the lever is. Um, if you want to throw some people in holes, use some fissures, use these. Again, a little bit more uh, treasure chests. You're probably not going to use these. I mean, you could probably use them for, like, ideas on a special ability that some character may have, maybe. And then the final one. Got a key, you've got some more fissures to fall into. A nice cap you can throw over a spot and be like, this part isn't useful. You can probably use the door and the pit marker in your own campaigns, that's helpful. Maybe the crystal prison, I don't know. Why you'd wanna leave it there, ignore the health and stuff. Uh, and then more chests. But you can definitely use these terrain pieces to make a dungeon to actually play Dungeons and Dragons. And I highly recommend, like, if you haven't gone out and done anything like that, this is probably a good place to start. And it gives you a bunch of minis to start with. But yeah, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. If you want to see more content like this, what's up? And again, if you guys want to see me make a video of all the minis that are in the Legend of Dritz board game, please let me know.